Hello, and welcome to Cult of Team Dice Let's Play. I am Bloodied, and we are back with some more Scarlet Hollow. Now, as I mentioned when I played the first chapter, the first chapter is free to play on Steam. The, uh, I enjoyed it so much, and it did happen to be about 20% off in the Steam Halloween sale, so I picked it up. Uh, so I now have episodes 2 and 3. Episode 4 is apparently coming out in November, so we don't have to wait for that. Uh, I believe there's going to be 7 episodes total. So it should finish, I think they're aiming to finish it sometime next year. But yeah, uh, it did port the save over, as you can see, so let's dive right in. Would you like to see a recap of episode one before you start episode two? Yes, let's recap everything. Like, we'll just assume that you don't remember anything. A long lost cousin. The bad news. The 26 hours of bus rides and countless late night stops and seedy depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself travelling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of Pearl and Scarlet. Your cousin's mother and your aunt seem like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Oh, we're skipping Peanut Guy. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. Frank! Hey, <laughs> Dustin. So, Miss Stella mentioned she's famous. Ah, oh, not Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not going around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. She hunts cryptids. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of Stella's flashlight while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. Pain. Rot. Decay. I'll leak those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. The narrator spoiler, he would not be eating those words. Come on, you whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. I took the dog over him. You dive forward and scoop Gretchen into your arms just before she manages to wriggle out of her harness. Your eyes fixate on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulder. God damn it! Still, I keep an eye on him for us. Make sure he doesn't get into any more trouble. I can't remember which one was which. So. Welcome home. My grandmother called them ditchlings, and they're a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. In the comfort of Stella's guest room, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. And you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments. For now, you're safe, and you're warm. Tuesday morning awaits. That was a recap. Uh, if you've skipped it, fair enough. Wow, options. I'll take some caffeine to hang on. Mm. There we go. Wake up. You open your eyes. The sun has risen. The birds are singing. You are still alive, and for now, you are safe. Your gaze wanders across the unfamiliar room to the window and the woods beyond, and you wonder if the monsters are lurking just beyond the trees ready to pounce as soon as you leave the comfort of your new friend's family home. You can't help but remember Duke, slumped against a tree, pieces of him scattered across the clearing. A knock at the front door. Your morbid thoughts are interrupted by a distinctly unhappy voice filtering through the house and past the closed door of your bedroom. Where the hell is bloodied? 
Oh, hey, Tabby. There's a fish pot of coffee on the table if you want to come in. No, I'm just here to check in on my cousin. Let's make this quick. I have a lot on my plate today. You're barely decent. It might be mildly scandalous if people saw you like this. <laughs> oh god, the temptation. Saunter out half-clothed. You might not be fully decent, but you're not about to let that stop you from being a part of this conversation. Ah, put some clothes on. Morning. How'd you sleep? Gretchen excitedly looks at you and wiggles her tail. I simply must say this. what a joy it is to see that you're finally up. I do hope you're well rested and you don't mind our most unfortunate guest. What exactly did the two of you get up to last night? We went to the woods to film a video. No, 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 not that part. <laughs> the cops called this morning and told me all about that. Did? What did they say? Did they find Duke? They didn't find a body, if that's what you're asking. But apparently he never went home last night. And they had quite a few questions about you, bloodied. I really could have stuck you with myself a more sensible name in these last place. Oh, don't worry, I told them you were an upstanding citizen. You should remember that kindness the next time you think about blowing me off to spend the night with a stranger. Hey! Don't be so hard on bloodied. I asked him to crash here. And look, I don't care what the cop thinks, Tabby. There's something horrible out in those woods, and I don't think anyone in this room wanted bloodied walking up that mountain alone last night. <sighs> Stella, would you mind giving me a moment alone with my cousin? And while you're at it, please stop calling me Tabby. We're not in high school anymore. I... Uh, yeah, all right. You're not gonna let her treat my dearest Stella like that, are you, bloodied? Uh, isn't this Stella's house? Why are you bossing her around? Come on, Tabby, no berating guests in the Richmond household. Whatever, I don't really care if you're here for this. You've been down less than a day and my stress is already through the roof. I mean, I get it, Stella got you all walked up and you were too scared to walk home. Sure, whatever, that checks out. But I don't care if those words are chock full of ghouls and ghosties. You had me worried sick. From now on, you're back at the estate by bedtime. No more impromptu sleepovers. I watched a man die last night. Cut me some slack. He mentioned that before I went to bed. I have no idea what happened in the woods, but if that's true, it's all the more reason to head back to the estate before it gets dark. I'm leaving. I've already lost a good chunk of my work day coming down here. I expect to see you back at the estate tonight. Stella, please try not to traumatise him while I'm gone. Wait, Tabby. Let me know if you're free sometime, okay? Tabitha sighs. You're relentless. We'll see, but don't get your hopes up. And then she moonwalks. <laughs> hey, uh, you good? Sorry about Tabby, she totally blindsided me. Uh, I'm good, but how are you? That was a little tense. I think we're in the same boat. I probably should have known Tabby would have stressed about you spending that here, but I haven't seen her in a while. Oh my god, Gretchen's little dirt face in the background. I love you, Gretchen. I didn't think she'd actually come all the way down here. <sighs> Sucks this is probably the longest interaction I've had with her since high school. Anyways, uh, sorry for the rude awakening. Not for a little while, but was hoping to let you get some extra sleep. But you're up now, and we have a full day ahead of us if we're going to get to the bottom of this. A full day ahead of us? That sounds like it's walking time to me. Explore. How are you so 
Chipper, you shouldn't be okay right now. Uh, I guess I'm just pretty good at compartmentalising things. What happened out in the woods last night was horrific, but right now we have something important to focus on. I'll have time to process what happened to Duke when we get to the bottom of things. Shouldn't just bury your feelings like that. What happened to Duke last night would mess with anyone. I get that, but I'm fine, really. At least for now. I can process this in my own time. Alright, boss, what's the game plan? No, oh, don't call me boss. We're partners in this. But first things first, I was hoping to swing by the library. Kanika's got a head start on us. It looks like she's already there. Oh, that reminds me. Let me set, let me set up a group chat. What's your number? You and Stella exchange numbers. A text message from Stella to you and Kanika. It reads, group chat, two exclamation marks. Two exclamation marks. Agnes. Hopefully we can find out more about Ditchlings from some of the older books there. I've a couple of threads cooking on my cryptid forums, but who knows if that'll pan out. Anyway, daylight's burning, so let's roll out as soon as you finish getting dressed. Get dressed and head to town. The walk to town was short. Sellers' house is barely a stone throw from what remains of Scarlet Hollow's once bustling main street. You shudder as you stare down the thoroughfare, both from the chill of the morning air and the all-too-present memories of everything you witnessed last night. You see that building labelled Town Hall? That's actually the library. Well, it's also the Town Hall, but that's just a small upstairs office nowadays. Well, I guess this town's not what it used to be. That and our mayor's really into going on walks. I think there's actually going to be a meet and greet later. Could just be the pick-me-up we need with everything that's been going on. Stella may be... Stella may be fond of him, but I certainly didn't vote for that beast. Gretchen doesn't seem to care for him. I, mean, I know you've joked about it a couple of times, but I'm actually starting to believe you can understand her. Gretchen absolutely can't stand Mayor Jimmy. <laughs> oh, hey. One, one is Stella, and same to you, Gladid. Hello, handsome, handsome fellow. Speak of the devil, we were just talking about you. Coming from Stella's, huh? One of a slumber party? Uh, sorry, y'all, but I'm actually a bit of a rush this morning. I, I really can't stop to chat. It will take me a bit to set up, so if you want to catch up with folks or grab something at the diner, you can meet me at the library when you're done. Uh, see you in a bit, Stella. Cool. See you soon. Oh, she always has time to chat. Is she feeling okay? Oh, uh, Stella and Bloody just got up to a bit of trouble last night, that's all. Can't just drop something like that and leave me hanging. What happened, Bloody? Tell Avery the... Ah, sorry, he's had some... Stella and I went to the woods to try and find a skunk ape, but we ran into something way worse. Actual monsters. Sibyl said they're called ditchlings, but whatever they are, they killed Duke and have been mutilating the local wildlife. Whoa, whoa, slow down. Duke is dead? It's true, I'm afraid. It's awful. Has, has anyone told Bo? Yes, he's taking it as well as you can imagine. I'm going to check in on him today, poor lad. I can't believe you had to see that one, dude. Tell you what, I'm on break for the next half hour. I bet you swing by the diner. Maybe they'll fix you some of Sybil's new blend and try to calm your nerves. With shagging and lemon balm, it always helped me on the bad days. And if you don't know well, what happened, and well, it was. Anyway, it's up to you. See you around, buddy. See you, Sybil. Care now, Avery. Confidant. 
I better get back to it myself. I'm glad I was able to catch you this morning. If only to see how you were holding up. Please don't hesitate to stop by if I can be of any help. This town seem to know or care that the woods is full of monsters. People tell a lot of stories up in the hills, especially city folk who wouldn't know a bear from a bigfoot. No offense, of course. But I'm afraid that means most folks aren't going to take your claim very seriously. At least not until they see what you saw with their own eyes. Be gentle with them, blooded. I'm so sorry to cut a conversation short, but. I've got things that need tending to. Stay safe and God bless. Sally said you had some time to kill before she finished setting up. We head towards the diner. Yeah, let's, go, let's, let's cash in on the diner. We might have time for the dental store afterwards. The diner is a little quiet today, but the air is still heavy with the tantalizing smell of breakfast. Okay, no, I'm not going to try and warn the patrons of the danger because they'll think I'm a lunatic and I don't need that. Don't take it. You slide into the boob across from Avery. Yeah, that's right there. Before you exchange words, we need sidles up. A fresh mug of tea in hand. Ah, she knows how to treat a Brit. I heard you might need this. The answer to 29 down is wink, by the way. Oh, but who is pen sound? Huh? Well, that's kind of Makes. Wait, that is a pig pen? Are you kidding me? How was I supposed to guess that? I don't know, I wouldn't bother with those things. They're just gonna frustrate you. This is only for the time, but maybe I could switch to Sudoku. Ah, Sudoku! My nemesis. When he leaves Avery contemplating daily newspaper puzzles, returning to her seat behind the counter. So, uh, thanks for telling me about last night. I really get the gritty details you can tell me. I won't judge. Okay. You hesitantly take a sip of your tea. It tastes like you're drinking mold that someone tried to unsteadily spruce up with lemon balm. down and never pick it back up. Lucky for the tea. Oh, to pick it back up, but nobody needs to know that. So note to self, do not have this one lined up as a review on the cult. I well, probably should have warned you about the tea. Shadow does not mess around. It's a fungus harvest of the local birch trees. It's supposed to be super healthy for you, and it sure tastes like it. It's a challenging drink. I'll actually read the dialogue. I could tell you about last night, but uh, what if you don't believe me? Well, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to listen. Tell me about last night. You spilled the beans, glad to have someone to talk to about the horrors you've witnessed. Wow, and there's some heavy stuff. No wonder Stella seemed distant. Yes, she's in the woods. I haven't lived here long, but I've never heard anything like that happen around these parts. I can't say I like the thought of it. Now to think about it, when the cops came with the morning coffee, they mentioned something about going out to the woods to look for someone. Mm, must have been Duke. I seem so disconnected from it. I figured it couldn't be very serious, but wow. I don't get it. They saw Sully's footage. They saw what happened out there, but it feels like so far all they've done is hound me. Yeah, I don't know if it'll anxiety, but even if they think you did something, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't bother going after you. Those cops come in here every day, and I feel like I know them pretty well by now. And let me tell you, they have no follow-through. I can't tell you the number of complaints they've just, like, dropped after a day or two. I don't vouch for you flitter or anything. And 
Thank you for a, thank you for a transplant. Where are you here from? Well, I moved here from Charlotte, guess three years ago now. And a little more. I've lost track. Aunt Winnie offered me a place to stay in a job, and well, who was I to pass up on that sort of generosity? To be honest, still feels like I just moved in. Practically everyone apart from the cool folks grew up in this town, so it's not like I'm the perpetual new kid. Oh, don't get me wrong, folks here are plenty polite and friendly, but there's a shared history I'll never be part of. Why'd you leave Charlotte, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, that's cool, I was having some uh, issues with my folks about my education, which... Wasn't great, especially since I was still stuck under the roof. When my aunt heard about it, she offered me a job and a place to stay, and the rest is history. Mm, I get it. I felt out of place the whole time I've been here. Folks in the hall have been plenty friendly, but life is so different than what I'm used to. It's hard to explain, but I just don't feel like I belong. Exactly. Well, this worst place to be, but I'm not entirely not sure I'll ever entirely feel like I belong here. Do you regret moving here? Ah, I don't have the choice to have second thoughts. I can only rely on Winnie, and there's no way she's leaving this place. Hmm. I'm on the case, but I hardly know where to start. Let me know if you hear anything. Oh, definitely. Aw, oh, man, looks like my shift is starting. I uh, hope the shaggers have a chance to start working its magic. Anyways, where everyone comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what goes on around here. I'll let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything strange or unusual. Avery slips out of the booth, giving a friendly halfway before, before disappearing into the back. You leave the diner, ready to continue your day. You may as well check out the general store. It's your first time seeing the general store in the light of day. The young man sits at the table by the register, too preoccupied with his phone to care that you've stepped in. Don't want to talk to him, I can just look around. Hi, I'm bloody though. Just got to town yesterday. I'm Miles. Um, so, if I wanted to buy chips or something here, do I talk to you? Or... You can have some chips if you want. It's no big deal. Okay, I'm paying for my chips then. I, I insist. Oh, come on, I'm trying to be nice. I mean, wouldn't that be stealing? You know, can I catch me offering someone some free chips? She can hire someone else and let me live my life. She inherited the storm. I don't want to keep getting sucked into working here just because I'm her brother. I make most of my money on bulk artists anyway. A bag of chips doesn't make a difference. No, I'm good, thanks. Alright. Yep. See ya, Miles. See ya. Miles' focus turns back to his phone as you leave the general store. Ah. Head to the library. Enter the former town hall. What once must have been a stately foyer has since been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to assorted reference collections and reading areas. Oh, you made it! Settle in with Stella and Kanika. I'm just distracted by this picture. Okay, I was distributed with my finger originally, I'll distribute it with this finger instead, of Guy Tied to Rail and Burning Forest. Uh, right. We'd have to sell on table and settle in. The room. <laughs> Glad you found the place. Hey, bloody, you look tired. 
My goodness, whatever happened to common decency? You can't go around telling someone they look unwell. You look marvellous, blooded. Snitch on Miles. <laughs> I am not a snitch. It was hard to fall asleep last night, all things considered. With all those dreadful creatures in every nook and corner, it's a wonder you got even a wink. <sighs> Can't say I got a wink myself. Uh, same. Anyway, I, I guess we should get started. Hey there, strangers. And literal stranger. Do I flirt with this guy? Yes, I flirt with this guy. <laughs> oh, we're going to be saying this for long. I'm bloodied. Oh, you rascal blooded. Oh, gosh. Um, hi. I'm Oscar Gutierrez, chief librarian and only librarian. I leave in town for the funeral. Oh, I should have known you were Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I was just a little kid when she left. Not that Scarlet resemblance. It's, uh, strong. Not that that's a bad thing. Musk is amazing. He practically built this library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what kids are going to grow up with. I don't know how good they've got it. Back when I was in elementary school, a library had was a couple of shelves of boring books donated by old people. They're all too kind. Um, but speaking of kids, have either of you seen Rosalind around town? Uh, I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts, and I wanted to make sure she wasn't getting into trouble out there. You know the crowd she hangs around with. Oh, they're good kids at heart. I'm sure they're just up to the old Maxwell place doing tea and stuff. I went up there plenty of times in my day, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. What's the old Maxwell place? Oh, it's this great old abandoned spot. We used to hang out there when we were teens. Can't believe the history's so reckless. The floors there were like Swiss cheese. I really should have a talk with Rosalina when she gets home. <laughs> say nothing. You say nothing and let the others talk. You won't want to run off like that anymore, though. It's not as safe as it usually is around here. Is uh, that so? Kanika's right. There's some weird stuff going on out in the woods. That's actually what we came in today. Have you ever heard of creatures called Ditchlings? They're a type of cryptid that shows up around places on the brink of disaster. They kind of look like if the Pillsbury Doughboy was a creepypasta. Kavika's mum told us about them last night after seeing some footage we got in the woods. Ditchlings? Doesn't ring a bell. Dang, worth a shot. Okay, if you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, when would you start looking? Hmm, well, they say history repeats itself, so I'd probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Hmm, should I be worried about something? <laughs> I don't know yet. I'll be right back. Gonna go nab some more books. Hey, while I'm gone, Gretchen. Oh, you don't have to worry about her, Stella. You're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old gal. Why don't you do the sweetest thing on two legs? Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit, drool leaking from her toothless mouth as she swallows it whole. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking up the wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling the town. But she's right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something unusual going on out in those woods. Whatever that there in the woods has been brutalizing the local wildlife, but I don't think it's safe. Oh, I'm gonna try calling Rosalina again. I'm sure she's fine, really. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than to go around getting into trouble, and we'll make sure to keep our eyes peeled. Thanks, Kanika. And love you, if you see a 13-year-old girl with a black braid and glasses, would you let her know her dad is worried about her? Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Got him. Described a whole mess of local history books. Stella sets a massive pile of books at the table and pulls up a chair. All right. 
this is going to be so much faster with the two of you here to help out. Got our snacks, got our source documents. Let's get this research party started. Reading awaits. Okay, so history of the mines. Abolition folk monsters. Reading is for suckers. No. Oh my god, she's so happy. Uh, okay. Let's go with history of the scarlet hollow coals. Forced to into retirement at age 50 due to a war injury from his time in the Indian Wars, exacerbated by his short stint serving as a captain in the Confederacy. Ah, oh, shit. Silas, Silas Scarlet also lost his eldest two sons to that bloodiest of wars, leaving his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlet, to take charge of the mine. Under his leadership, the mine prospered, undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Managed to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable mines in the country. Andrew Scarlet built the rebranding town into what is today, is today, with expensive stone buildings, a bustling main street, and overseeing it all, the elegant Scarlet Estate that, until 1889, the largest and finest feat of architecture in the region. Culminating in the tragic collapse of 1918, it was found that Charles Shaw, the co-manager uh, co of the mine, had loosened security measures to increase production during World War I, resulting in a fatal collapse and the death of over 160 men and boys, some as young as 10. The casualties included Andrew Jackson Scarlett's th eldest son, Theodore, who had taken over from his aging father during the bustle of the war. His brother, Enoch V. Scarlet, managed to pull the mine from the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. So this is how your family made its fortune. And also, yeah, one of them was the lead, was in the fucking Confederate Army. Fuck. Silas Scarlet. Silas Everett Scarlet was born to Colonel Everett J. Scarlet in 1818, one of twelve siblings. He grew up in eastern North, East North Carolina during a tumultuous time in the state's history, and not much is known about his life before he joined the army in 1836. He quickly rose to the ranks in part due to his father's connections, but also due to a particular ruthlessness for which he received the nickname Bloody Silas Scarlet. The federal government granted the now Captain Silas, no, 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 Captain Scarlet, a tract of bounty land in exchange for his service in the Indian War, and he settled into the hills of North Carolina in 1841. That land would become Scarlet Hollow. But it started as a simple log cabin, built by Silas's own two hands, occupied by his family of ten, Silas, his wife, Mary Joseph Scarlet, and their eight children. The logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners to the hill, but it wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of coal running underneath the entire region that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. He saved what he could, and bought the surrounding hillside at a great discount, cleverly hiding what he knew about the land's true value. Thus, he had all the resources to found Scarlet Hollow's now famous coal mine. You're finished with this one. Okay. Sort of, sort of caffeine for the working man. A few entries catch your eye. Ooh, but it's cat. <laughs> Tummy knockers. Often linked with Cherokee myths, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating with the story of a woman who sought vengeance against the monstrous cat demon for driving her husband mad. She hunted it down and, by wearing a bobcat mask, tricked it into using its own vile magic on itself, freeing the people of the region from its evil. Others say the creature comes from the story of a woman who wore the pelt of a wild cat to witness forbidden hunting rites. The hunters of her village gathered to perform the rites, and she watched in secret but from underneath the cat's pelt, but was soon discovered. For her indiscretion, she was fused with the pelt, and transformed into a creature that was neither human nor cat, forced to wander the wilderness alone, feared by all. Her cause are those of great sadness, and serve as a warning to anyone who dares go against tradition. Women, know your place, or you'll be turned into a were-cat. Tommyknockers. Tommy knockers originated from Cornish mythology, running to the United States when Cornish immigrants began working in Appalachian mines. They are named for the knocking that can be heard from seemingly within the walls before a cave-in. 
According to some, the knocking serves as a benevolent warning. Others believe the creatures take stolen hammers to the supports of the mine and collapse them on whoever is unfortunate enough to still be inside. They are traditionally thought to be impish, leprechaun-like beings, but some claim they are the spirits of dead miners, forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. Dillypool. There was a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone with his hunting dog. One night, after a particularly bad week of hunting, both their stomachs empty, the hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. Some small creature had gotten into the cabin through a hole, and before he could even figure out what it was, he had drawn his gun and fired at the thing, his hunger guiding his actions. But it was quick, and ran back through its hidey hole and out of sight, leaving its long black tail shot off by the hunter's rifle. Yes, this'll have to do, he said to his dog, and threw the tail in a pot to cook for soup. He and his dog ate well that night, the tail filling them both up. The hunter crawled into bed satisfied, and his dog curled up at his feet. He woke to the sound of long nails scrabbling across wood. His dog was nowhere in sight, only a rumpled spot on the covers where he'd been, and in the gloom he saw two big yellow eyes staring right at him. I want my daily paw, a high hoarse voice croaked from the darkness. No way, he screamed at the thing. But it stepped closer to him, still shrouded in darkness, the sound of long claws dragging across hardwood accompanying its movements. I want my daily paw, the creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you, the hunter squeaked, his voice catching in his throat with fear, but there was no dog to be seen. I want my daily paw. Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature leapt from the darkness, long claws stretched out towards the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him that night, but the next morning, all that remained of the hunter, his dog and his cabin, was a chimney, standing alone in the woods. We are done here. You close the book and put it back. Hmm, I think I'm all done. Let's check in. Alright, so if we're going by what Kanika's mum told us last night, I think we can rule out any natural disasters as what brought the Ditchlings here. But not nuclear incidents, and this is a has a history of those. What about you? Did you find anything? We can respond. A handsome black cat leaps on the table. Stella quickly slams her book shut. Aw, hey Pixel. Oh, I close your book. He loves to rip up any paper he can find. Pixel, my dear friend, it's been too long. How have you been? Hungry. Let Stella bring the good stuff. Oh, don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treats. Oh, yes. Night time. Crunch, crunch. Oh, sorry if Pixel's bothering you. Hopefully he hasn't gobbled up any of our books. Can't stand the thought that people might pay attention to anything that isn't him. Let, you, let a paper shredder freely wander the library. Run your mind your own business. Have you seen this little guy's face? How do I say no to that? Hey, Pixel. What do you think about the monsters we saw in the woods? I'm an indoor cat. I don't know anything about no woods. I just hang out in the library. Especially now our house got haunted. Wait, wait your house is haunted? What? Hey, how you know? What? Pixel told me. Bloody to see the psychotic or he can talk to animals. It's a long story. No comment. I've uh, been living in the library for a little bit. Great. Way more snakes, way more scritches. Except sometimes there's too much scritches. Hold up, what kind of haunting are we talking about here? Unexplained noises? Objects appearing in strange and unfamiliar places? Gretchen is really excited that Pixel is licking his asshole. Oh, let's go and get her hopes up like that. Uh, nothing like that, sorry. The floor in my bedroom just keeps seeping blood, and I've seen a strange figure in the hallway a couple of times. 
Wait, you've seen a full body apparition? Can I see it? Is that right? It's probably just a dirty pipe or something. What if it's a ghost? Richard's appalled. It's worth looking into. Yeah, we all are more than welcome to check it out. Maybe tomorrow night? Yes, we will be there. Yeah, that sounds like a fun way to spend the evening. Can't wait to get spooked by some creaky pipes. Leave Pixel B. Who decide to leave Pixel B? The cat curls up on the table, fast asleep. Alright, I'd better get back to shelving. Let me know if you all need anything. Here, can he give visibly shudders? I get cold sweats just thinking about being in a place like that. I feel for the guys who work up there. I could never well, speak for yourself. I know that would be a good reverse. The book kind of just glosses over it. I uh, think it's a union for a little bit, but it didn't last. It's not a thing I've written about in the past century here. And yeah, this kind of hot mind isn't the most ethically run business. No offense or anything, and I'm sure Taddy runs the mines better than Charles Shaw did. Still hasn't let the union in now. And there's a reason she and I don't talk. Conditions. Color shocked. Yeah, it's pretty awful. That's what that sculpture had friends for, knowing all the men and children who died that day. And every kid in Scarlet Hollow learns about the collapse of 1918. The teacher loves to emphasize how many children they had working down there. Want to try and show us how good we have it or whatever. The bar, if you ask me. You know, that could be what the digitings are warning about. Another collapse. Writing it down on the list of potential disasters? Sheesh, Scala, that's morbid. Besides, it's not Charles Shaw's fault. The labor market is way more strict now. There's no way you get away with the kind of safety cutbacks he pulled. Uh, you don't actually think the mine's about to collapse, right? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Oof, I was worried there for a second. I had to give with any credit, but the mine is safer now than it was back then. Still, a horrible thought. Never know. Ooh, you guys really seem to have a bone to pick with Charles Shaw. Well, that's what happens when someone directly causes a monumental disaster, especially in a small town like this. People tend to spit when they hear your name. He got run out of the rail, you know. That's one of your speech. Back then they actually tied you to a rail and ran out of town. This is a new over a bit over on the far wall. That's what that is. It's a little easy if you ask me. What if the ditchlings are coming from the mines? Maybe there's some sort of subterranean creature the miners accidentally dug up? Hmm, not gonna lie, at this point I'd believe that. Hmm, so you take a bunch of cryptid boxes. Hmm, the mines have been acted for. 150 years. I'd be surprised if they only managed to dig up something now. You guys seem pretty serious about this, huh? Okay. Uh, Stella, what was that you were saying about nuclear incidents? You were talking about that Goldsboro thing, right? Uh, yeah, apparently the 60s of B-52 carrying a lot of warhead broke up mid-air and dropped a couple of bombs. Did they hit the love shack? Fascinating bit of history there. I guess the two bombs landed upright after its parachute got caught in a tree. Thankfully it didn't go off. At the time, the government claimed the bomb was unarmed, but it later came out the only thing preventing a detonation was a single electrical switch which failed to trigger on the descent. And six years later, the second bomb still hasn't been recovered. Right, let's go 
emissions was a disintegrated in the air, the rest of the nuclear material was made unrecoverable by flooding. If I remember correctly, they just buried it and sealed it up. I'm sorry, did you say they buried it? Can I have something dug up? Because if so, I am your gal. I think this army nuclear bombs is part of our skill set. Absolutely not. Looks like Gunsburg is more 400 miles from here. I think we're good. I'm just saying, you never know with radiation. We actually got a bit. It just melts you. It doesn't make monsters. And a 6 year old bomb isn't going to explode in seven hundreds of miles away and kill us here. You never know. There could be a whole other society of bomb worshipping mutants just waiting to blow it up. I have missed this. <laughs> Someone liked beneath the planet of the eights. So, send a scarlet. Which guy from the south? Uh, she should figure old money from the south wouldn't be great, but uh, he should do some things to get where he was. Huh? It's a perfect example of why you should use multiple sources for your research instead of trusting the first thing you read on a subject. Excellent. This man has done his history work. Yep, dude was a monster. Money made a lot of might made a lot of money during the Civil War too, and you can probably guess which side a North Carolinian business owner would be working for. Well, I'm sorry you related to him. Seems like a terrible person, but I don't see that what that has to do with bad omens or creatures in the woods. I agree. We're talking about ancient history here. Yeah, we probably have better leads. Well, never hurts to have historical context. Union and quietly whisper to Stella and Kanika. Do you guys think there's like a cult here? Okay, no, I'm not saying they're nudists. I mean, those cops were awfully suspicious last night. The I mean, combination of being dismissive and trying to pin things on me? I don't know, it just feels like a cover-up. Yeah, that was pretty bad, but I'm not sure they really have it in them to be part of a cult. Mm, definitely. I think they're capable of putting it in effect. They're putting it in the, putting in the effort. One day I will read things right. Appalachian folk monsters. So, Appalachian folk monsters. Who used to tell me that Taily Post story back when I was little? I can't believe I forgot that one. This game is so bad I didn't eat soup for years. Oh, the monster might try and dig it out of my stomach if I did. <laughs> I love that one. There's the old chimney in the woods. I used to think it was a chimney from Tony Bell. The one that was left up with a dig or whatever it did. Now I know it's just because chimneys don't burn down and wooden houses do. No, it's not the chimney from Tony Bell. I've come back a couple times and seen some pretty spooky stuff. Uh, I watched that video. You saw raccoons. I'm going to get rabies one of these days chasing up a wild life like that. I like to live on the edge. Well, this cat's kind of sound like it could be mountain lions. Voice like a woman crying out, somewhere between person sized and cat sized. Oh, definitely, they are 100% mountain lions. Can you get you know there are no mountain lions up here? I thought you were supposed to be a skeptic. A well, skeptic's all okay. Oh, Stella, one of these days you'll trust us. The myths are old, right? Mountain lions didn't go extinct in the Appalachians that long ago. The legends just haven't died off yet. Almost every cryptid can be tracked down to either a hoax or someone getting confused about a perfectly normal animal. Sometimes both. Bigfoot, for instance, saw this prank. Then folks saw bears walking around with their hind legs and got freaked out, and now here we are. Then you get those words when I get the first clear footage of a Bigfoot. 
Anything managed to add oil or print out a piece of paper that says Bigfoot isn't real and literally eat it, I promise. I'm holding you to that. Do you think the ditchlings are Tommy Knockers with the whole warning thing? Hmm, good thought, but Tommy Knockers live in mines, like, that's their whole thing? I am going to write it down now. Tommy Knockers literally just sounds like. I literally just the sound of what happens when a bunch of rocks and wood are about to collapse. Are they? Or are they the sounds of mysterious creatures pounding on the rocks and support beams with hammers to cause a collapse? There's simply no way to know. Well, let's move on. Do you think Wayne factors into any of this? Well, that creeps keep coming around my mum's tea room. He snuck up on us last night and called that bloody by name. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong with him. Maybe he's sick. Maybe that is actually like someone in the woods. I don't know. Oh, I'd buy it. Hmm, what do y'all think? There's an awful lot of mind related stuff in my notes. Maybe that should be our next stop. We can poke around, find out if anyone's seen anything weird. Just to clarify, you are suggesting we could question some of the miners, right? We are not poking around unprepared in the actual mines, right? Right? Yeah, totally, 100%. I would never. We don't even have a good reason to go down there. Good. Let's keep it that way. You know how I feel about mines. I promise, Snakes, we're just going to question some of the miners. And if that question gives us a good reason to poke around, say, a cool abandoned coal mine, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You can cross that bridge when we come to it. I am not going underground. I'm just messing with you. We'll stick to the surface. Okay, good. And hopefully we can find out what happened to Wayne while we're at it. I'm sure Tabitha's gonna love that we're sneaking around. Sam goes for all of us, honestly. I can't think of a single person in town Tabitha would be happy to see. Well, let's have to make sure we don't get caught. We'll be super sneaky. I can even keep looking out. Look at us, going to caper together. I miss this. I missed it too. I mean, sure, it's not one of the best circumstances, but I've been so wrapped up in running the store, I didn't realize how much I missed being able to hang out with you. Uh, there is something missing. Reese. I really miss that dude. I can't believe how it's been since we've seen each other. Have you seen him lately? No, I tried to plan stuff, but he's been too sick. I didn't realize it was going so bad. Oh, God. Hmm. Could this pop over and surprise him? He's excited to be blooded. It was funny coming to leave his little cave. Hell yeah, let's do it. I'll let you know if we run into Rosalina. Thanks, guys. I'll keep you all posted. Handsome deal with this dad bod. Reese's home stands at the edge of the forest wall, an isolated buffer cushioning the rest of the town from an unending wilderness. Reese, it's Stella. I brought some buddies, too. So loud, he's still sleeping. Can I help you with something? The woman in the doorway stares directly into your eyes. You can practically feel her simmering irritation wash over you. Uh, hi, Dr. Kelly. We were wondering if it would be okay if Reese could come hang out. Nothing strenuous, we promise. I'm not going to wake him up. If he's sleeping, he probably needs it. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now anyways. Poor Reese. It's just been so long since either of us have got the chance to hang out with him. I'm sure he and Bloodied would get along super well too. Hi, I'm Bloodied. Vivian's kid? I know who you are. The way she avoids looking at you as she speaks makes you feel like you've done something wrong, even though you're pretty sure you've not done anything at all. Reese's mum turns back to the house, sighing. 
sorry, I know that was a little rude. You just want to hang out with Reese, and he misses both of you too. She sighs again, as if deciding whether to finish her thought. He's usually filling his rest around mid-afternoon. Why don't you come over tomorrow? We can have some supper, and you all can hang out for a bit. I don't promise that he'll be perky, but I'm sure it'll brighten his spirits up to see you two again. And I suppose you can come too, bloodied. That'd be great. You can bring a side dish. Maybe deviled eggs. Does he still eat those? No, eggs are a little much for him. They don't settle well. You can leave the cooking to me. I know what he can handle. Okay, I'll uh, bring soda then. That's not... Okay, yes, fine. You can bring soda. Nothing with caffeine. Ginger ale, preferably. Oh, and leave the dog at home. <laughs> she might cheer him up. You know they have those therapy dogs in the hospital? No dogs. Ah, oh, never. The absolute gall. Thanks so much, Dr. Kelly, but we'll stop bothering you now. See you later. Dr. Kelly nods in acknowledgement and quickly shuts the door. The sound of several locks clicking into place can be heard from within. God, that woman makes me so nervous. <sighs> Remember she used to be so nice and carefree when we were kids? She always had the best stickers when we had to get our shots. Maybe she's just stressed about Reese. Or maybe she's just nice to kids. Either way, I guess it's just the three of us. You gonna drive? Yeah, sorry, I don't like the thought of going up there without the van. Cool, I'll take my shortcut then. It shouldn't take me long. It shouldn't take long for me to get there. You're welcome to tag along, bloodied. Don't worry, I won't be offended if you'd rather ride with Nika. I'm sure you're probably sick of the woods. Either way works for me. I think her parents died in a car crash, so... I'll walk with Stella. We'll meet you there. I must conquer my fear of the woods. The woods are calm and serene compared to last night. But you can't help but get the feeling that danger lurks just beyond the trees. Hey, thanks for coming along with us. With Gretchen and me, I mean. I hope I haven't seemed too cold about everything that happened last night. The truth is, I'm barely keeping myself together. I just don't know how to let it out. You died out there last night, and I can't stop thinking that it might have been my fault. If only I died for that flashlight. If only I didn't drag you along into the woods. Stella, whatever happened last night, you did nothing wrong. I just wish you could understand that. She's such a good girl. Stella pauses, searching for what to say. It's like there's this guilt boiling under my skin. The only way I can process what happened is by turning off the part of me that feels things. When I'm around other people, it's like I think of Duke dying as just a thing that happened. Like it's just part of another video. Because if I actually admit to other people that I feel something, then I'd have to admit that what happened is my fault. Oh, well, I'm not going to fucking say that. Jesus. not your fault. It's nobody's fault. You and Gretchen have gone into these woods at night dozens of times for yourself and nothing like this has happened before. How could you have known? Thanks, buddy. I think I needed to hear that. The conversation comes to a dramatic halt with you, Stella and Gretchen all whirling round to face the source of the sound. A bird? Let me at it. I can get it. Back off, dog. This is my stick. Whoa, whoa. Calm down, gal. It's just a bird. Same probably goes for the two of us. <laughs> I think we're a little on edge. Let's hurry to the mine. It shouldn't be much further. Stick war. Kanika casually leans against her man as you and Stella emerge from the woods. Hey. You all have a good walk? Yeah, it's great. I mean, not that you were missing out or anything. You didn't run into any of those creatures, did you? Nope. That makes sense. They're probably nocturnal. I don't know if I feel relieved or disappointed. But we're all here. What's the plan? I guess we just go talk to people. I guess so. I should probably be on lookout duty. I'm kind of a persona non grata in the mines. Abafo? 
Yeah, I might have tried to sneak in to talk to her a time or two too many. And Gretchen makes it extra hard to be sneaky. What can I say? I thrive in the limelight. Give me a little dirt face. <laughs> We'd probably like to get caught if only one of us is snooping around down there. If Stella's all look at duty and only one of us is going in, what's the third person doing? You know those cheesy com coms where someone wears an earpiece on their first date? Oh, do you have a surveillance rig in the back of your van that I didn't know about? What? No. I have a pair of earbuds with a really good mic. We can just do a group call. <laughs> I take it I'm the one of us you're talking about. Tabitha and I aren't exactly friends and pretty much all the money shop at the general store. I don't want to make folks uncomfortable, you know? It's probably for the best, bloodied. Hmm. You're good, Kanika. I got this. You'll do great. Here's those earbuds I mentioned earlier. Kanika hands you a pair of earbuds. We can feed you questions if you get stuck, and Stella can give you a heads up if Tabitha's headed your way. Ah, oh, dang, I miss doing this sort of thing with you. You are so thorough. Aw, oh, thanks. I do my best. I guess we should part ways and start the call, yeah? Stella and Kanika break off, leaving you alone at the entrance to the mines. Your phone buzzes. Hey, can you hear us? Try saying something. Something. Stella and Kanika chuckle on the other end of the line. Alright, cool. Nothing to do now, but enter the worksite. Enter. You pass through the unlocked fence and enter the property of the Scarlet Hollow Mine. I'm in. Alright, Morpheus, good to know. Don't tell me good ones. Here in Reiner's, a blonde woman, a broad shouldered man, and an old timer. Their uniforms identify them as Harrison, Davis, and Zax. You got a reason to be bothering us? Hey there, I'm Tabitha's cousin. Yeah, we know. Me and Davis from the down yesterday when you popped in. How can we help? Anything weird lately? Nope, nothing at all. Make sure to tell your cousin that, okay? Hmm, maybe letting them know you were later Tabitha wasn't a good idea. No one about a guy named Wayne? Yeah, we know him. Who's such a cut up? Who's that dude? What happened to him? The miners shift for a moment. Uncomfortably glancing at one another. Isn't that the guy you all said was, um, uh, he's gone. That's all that matters. What happened to him? What do you think you are? Some kind of cop? Remain silent. You remain silent. Yeah, I don't the smell of this one bit. I know bait when I see it. Let's go out of here. My shift's about to start, anyways. Sorry. The miners pack up their things and leave. Where can I leave miners? Yeah, that's cute with miners. You saw the tracks. A shiver running down your spine as an unfortunately familiar voice calls out to you. You shouldn't be up here. It's dangerous. Why are you following me? Don't have to be afraid of me. Stay home. Don't keep wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. This is all I ask. Before you can say another word, the figure is gone. Hey, bloody, are you still there? We've just been getting static from you. 
Wayne got the jump on me. What? I thought I saw you talking to someone down there. Are you okay? He told me to stay on the estate. He told me to stay at the estate for the rest of the week. That I'd be safe there. Why would he tell me that? What the hell is that supposed to mean? He, he must have been threatening you, right? The plot thickens. Hmm, so this means we're on the right track. I'm not about to back down. Whoa, so brave. Heck yeah, bloody. We've got your back. Back to another group of miners. Hey there, can we help you with something? I haven't seen anything out of the ordinary lately. Like what? Any, any weird animals? Ooh, not going to go on many hikes. I'm kind of the nutrition type. I had a full day of work last year at my bed. Only a few birds in between. Any odd noises in the woods? I had something a few nights ago. Not, nothing I've ever heard. Some unearthly beast. I'm telling you, Isaacs, you need to take a sick day. You need rest, ma'am. I want to take on a sick day this year. Can't afford to take any more if I want to have Christmas off. Tabitha? You can't be that bad tonight. Have people been getting sick? Are you a health inspector or something? The boss looks out for our health. That's all on that front. Thanks. Anything else? Do any of you know a man named Wayne? Wayne? You mean Sam Wayne? What are you asking about him for? Wait, have you seen him? I saw him just now. He heard some creepy stuff to me and disappeared. I knew it. Probably just got back to camp after whatever he went off to do. But we're all on a tip. Creepy ain't exactly his MO. You know that, Isaacs. How do you know it was Sam Wayne? I don't recall seeing your face around here before. And that's what the folks at the general store have been calling him. Kanika and Sybil. Hmm. Good people, but I don't expect they know every man fella in town by sight. You catch my drift. Smith, you're losing me. I'm just saying, it'd be awful strange for Wayne to still be in town, wandering around, following some stranger, and not checking in with any of his buddies. Sam, he someone got sick of work, and Sam a little fun playing hooky. Following, though, yeah, that does sound a little unlike him. I bought his lady friend at him in Lock and Key. This smells fishy to me. I see him face to face, I'm not convinced whoever's calling himself Sam Wayne ain't the very reason he ain't seen hide no hair of the man. No, no, there's no way. He's not. He can't be. I'm not ruling it out. If you want my theory, that girlfriend of his, he wasn't the first to catch her eye. Any one of her jilted ex-lovers could be seen, seen them sneaking around and got a little hot under the collar, if you catch my meaning. Hey, what are they talking about? The miners are silent for a moment, glancing between each other nervously as they imagine the possibility. I told him not to get involved with her. I told him. Who's Wayne singing? Uh, whoa well now, if you don't know, there is no way I'm poking that wasp's nest. Forget we said anything. Yeah, I don't want to be next on the chopping block. Uh, well, I won't press you on it. Good. Well, thanks for the help. No mention it. It's begging in, boys. Back to work. Should we check in? Just a heads up, the only place to see is pretty close to the main office. It might still be worth talking to them, but I don't know if I can give you all that much of a warning if Tabitha comes out. I'm gonna try and talk to one last group of miners. Good luck. Going around asking questions, huh? You know I'm not like you're from the inspector's office. Notice anything strange around here lately? What kind of weird stuff happens in these hills? What sort of weird do you mean? 
Any weird animal sightings? Some crude coon with a big old tumor last week spooked me something awful. That's nature for you. It's not always pretty. I bet you that's fucking Kenny from The Walking Dead. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Any noises from the woods? All the time. Howling, screaming, all kinds of fiendish caterwauling. Uh, probably just screech owls and bobcats, you old coot. Might be, might not be. But I heard something you're not sent to fear. God shivering down my spine, I tell ya. People getting sick? I mean, some of the old amount is sure, but I wouldn't call that unusual. Hey, that's all on that front, sure. What can you tell me about Sam Wayne? Oh, ho, 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 he got himself into trouble, didn't he? Why, oh, you see him around? What's that young buck up to? I heard from some of the other folks in camp that he had a nasty spat with an ex and disappeared more than after. Ah, you mean the boss? As far as I know, that never ended. Stella audibly gasps. Yeah, I figured he just ran off to live in that big mansion with his bail. Thought of strapping that man with that sour face, bro, it always left such a bad taste in my mouth. Oh my god, gross. If you wouldn't fall on your knees if a woman of means showed the slightest bit of interest in you. Or any woman at all. Fair enough. Well, I suppose this begs the question. Did she run him off, or did some jealous son of a bitch oust him? Wait, are you talking about Pearl Ann? Lord, no, he can wait at some standards. No, I'm talking about little Miss Tabitha. Not that old lady Pearl Ann didn't have her day. Ah, that's all. Thanks for the help. My pleasure. That winky's bothering you, just let us know and we'll whip him into shape. Uh, bloody, I think we've got a problem. What the hell are you doing here? Ah, oh, crap, good luck. Sorry, bloody. And that is our cue. Pardon us. You shouldn't be here. This place is dangerous. Why can't you just stay at the estate and stop sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? And what is that ridiculous thing doing in your ears? Are you trying to record my employees? Are you trying to record me? Tabitha the snatches the earbuds out of your ears and throws them to the ground. Typical bone city dweller. Gah. And I have a meeting in five minutes. I can't even drive you back. Okay, look, I don't want you wandering anywhere else. Just stay here for an hour. I can take you back to the estate as soon as my meeting wraps up. Can you please do that for me? I need you to take what is going on right now seriously. I need you to take me seriously. And what? Pray tell, do you think is going on that I am not taking seriously? What monster of the week has Stella cooked up inside your head? Ooh, now do I mention Wayne or do I go with the Ditchlings? There are monsters in the woods, Tabitha. I know it's hard to take this seriously, but we caught them on camera and they're supposedly a portent of doom for the town. I'm not asking you to believe me but I am asking you to take me seriously. Look, I get it. I really do. Stella has a knack for spreading people into hysterics over shadows. But the only credible threat to the town right now is me not being able to do my job. Speaking of, I need to get to my meeting. Just stay here until I come get you, and don't move a muscle. We can talk about whatever monsters you think you saw after I get the rest of this day behind me. Tabitha rushes off to her meeting. You stoop to the ground and pick up Kanika's earbuds. Sorry I uh, wasn't able to give you a better warning. You good? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. You are interrupted by the sudden movement out of the corner of your eye. A girl carrying a bundle of snacks pops through a hole in the fence and disappears over the crest of a hill. Hey, uh, I think I just saw Rosalina. Wait, really? What is she doing here? 
Do we get a link, Quincy? What should we do? I mean, we should go after her when she gets hurt. Can you imagine what Tabitha would do if she catches Rosalina here? All right, I'm on my way. You rush over the hill and get your bearings, the sound of active mining fading into the distance. Rosalina is nowhere to be found, but dusty footprints point towards a nearby mine. Um, I'm just going to point at that right now. She didn't. Uh, I guess the old Maxwell place doesn't count it as a secret hangout spot these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago. After a collapse, it killed over a hundred people. And here I thought Stella was going to be the one to drag me into an abandoned coal mine. I guess we should go after her, right? Yep. Yeah, let's head in before someone gets hurt. Whoa, are you sure you want to tag along, Leeks? Uh, Luke and I can handle this on our own. Yeah, I'm sure. As much as I hate confined spaces, I'm not about to let Rosalina get hurt in there. You know, it means I have to go underground. <laughs> Stella and Kanika disappear into the mine. Before you fonder, you briefly wonder if you should let Tabitha know about this? Fuck it. I'm, I'm trying to be nice to Tabitha. You pull out your phone and dial your cousin. What is it? You know I'm in a meeting. Uh, a kid just snuck into the shore mine. Figured you should know. What? Are you serious? Why do things keep happening to me? Oh, whatever. I'll head over there as soon as I can. Just stay where you are and wait for me, alright? God, I don't even know I tried to reason with you. It's not like you'll listen. Hey, it was a courtesy. I'm not going to wait around for you. I swear to God. Hang up on her. <laughs> you hang up the call. Look at Eco and Stella into the mine. You take a deep breath and follow your new friends into the mine. The inside of the mine is warmer than you'd expected. The air thick and wet. The ceiling hangs much lower than you are tall, forcing you and your companions to hunch over, your legs bent in a painful squat as you begin to navigate its maze of corridors. Hey, you made it! I told you he would. You say nothing. Well, what matters is the gang's all here. We'll find Rosalina in no time. Press on. The deeper you progress into the mine, the heavier the air becomes. Coal dust hangs in thick clouds around you, even though this place was abandoned over a century ago. Jesus is cramped down here. Does anyone else's chest feel tight? I certainly can't say I'm one for dark and stuffy places, and this seems much more suited to a cat if I do say so myself. Yeah, abandoned mines are way more claustrophobic than people expect them to be, and this one's real bad. You know, because of the child miners, or should I say, the minor miners. Kanika visibly shudders. Okay, I'm not superstitious, but if someone want me to make sure you get haunted, it's cracking jokes about dead child labourers while walking on their graves. What well, can I say? I do my best to tempt the spirits wherever I go. I actually sat down here a few times to try and get some good footage, but my ghost hunting phase. Jesus, the things you do for your viewers. Did you find anything? I wish. If any place in Scarlet Hollow was actually haunted, it'd be this mine. Hands down. But all I got was dust in my lungs and a couple of false alarms. Stella pauses, a sound rushes overhead. Oh my god, what was that? The mine's gonna collapse and we're all gonna die here, aren't we? Stella sighs longingly. That's just how wind sounds down here. You sound so disappointed. It just brings back memories of my last foray to these depths. Every time I thought I'd finally found a spooky ghost, there wound up being a very unghostly explanation. Like local wildlife, for instance. Ah, uh, Batman! Stella turns her flashlight up towards an alcove overhead. Say, that's a big idea. Yeah, we were sleeping here. Shut the light off, you nosy bastards. I'm so sorry for my companions. Stella means well, I assure you. I was going to something real good last time I was here alone. 
I'm sure you're quite worried about me after my evil last night, bloody, but let that interaction be assured that my temper is most wholly under control. I wouldn't dare venture away from the safety of Mastella's arms in a horrible place like this. Oh my god, there are bats down here? I'm gonna get rabies, aren't I? I'm gonna get rabies and die in a mind collapse. You, uh, holding up, okay, Nix? Yeah, sorry, I'm just a little on edge. Kanika is stopped in sentence by a thunderous knock, echoing from deeper in the mine. Okay, what was that? That was death. Of that I am certain. That was... Uh, I have no idea what that was. Did that sound like knocking to you guys? We should hurry and find Rosalina. Yeah, agreed. The sooner we get out of this death trap, the better. Gosh, what are those Santa Tommy knockers? Okay, no, Tommy knockers are not real. They are not allowed to be real. Are you trying to give me a panic attack? I'd love to spend some extra time poking around in here. Maybe it's something to do with the mystery. The three of you are interrupted by a second, much less distant sound of a can be popped open. Okay, now that wasn't Tommy knockers. Came from this way. Follow me. Follow Stella. You and Kanika follow Stella further into the mine. You breathe a sigh of relief. The tight passageways give way to a small cavern. A group of teens turn and stare at you with annoyance. What the hell are you all doing in here? What the hell are you doing in here, creeps? Just stalking us? Yeah, creeps. I just said that, Alexis, and we want to echo on young to the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Right. I'm echoing young to the Grand Canyon. What are you, five? I'm 15, you loser. Who even are you? Yeah, that's bloody Daddy's cousin. Just let your dad is worried sick about you. If you ask me, he was right to worry. Why the hell would you think hanging out in an old mine was a good idea? Is the Maxwell place not dangerous enough? Oh, because no one usually comes here, duh. Everyone knows we hang out at the Maxwell place now, so we had to find a new hideout. Which you instantly found. So I guess we're going to have to find an even more secluded place where we can just be ourselves. I can't believe you're dancing with a funny Rosalina. That's messed up. I think that qualifies as harassment. You're right, Becky, it is messed up. I don't need telling me where I can be. At least you can, so he knows you're not dead. He loves you and worries about you. He's really not asking for much. Don't you kids have school tomorrow anyways? It's full break. And we're not kids. Yeah, we're teens. And pups these days. Absolutely no respect for their elders. And those canned strawberry margaritas. Where did you even get those? The teens avoid eye contact. Miles tries to melt into the cavern wall. Oh no, I know that isn't you, Miles. It had better not be you. Mm, whatever, it's me. What are you doing here? Beck is right. Sounds like to me you're home stalking, harassing, all that. You're supposed to be minding the store. It's not like anyone even comes any Tuesdays. Mom's there, so it's fine. I start uncomfortably as her the cavern as Kanika tears into her brother. It's not fine. It's extremely not fine. Why do I always have to be the responsible one? Do you know what I would give to be as carefree as you? I left school so you would have a chance to live your life, and this is what you're doing with it. What would Dad think he could see this stealing booze from the family store to dick around in an abandoned mine? Dad's dead, Kanika. If we're here, we disappointed you. Why not be such a boss jerk? Who cares about a can margarita somewhere nobody's supposed to bother us? You know, I'd love to. I'd love to help you all sort this out, but can we maybe do it not in an abandoned coal mine? Oh, and what are you, an expert in mine safety? We abandoned this place because there wasn't enough coal left to bother digging anymore. My dad told me, and he's an actual foreman of the continuous mining facility, so he knows what he's talking about. My dad was a charge hand. No, Alexis, he got promoted last month, and he says this place is totally safe and we can hang it here anytime we want. 
direction. Your father was a foreman at the country. We'll see if he even has a job tomorrow morning. What? Oh, shit. Oh, hey, Tabby. Kanika sighs. It's probably for the best that she's here. Do none of you understand what a boiled up mine entrance is supposed to mean? It means it's closed. Condemned. Not fit for human use. Oh, come on. This place is way sturdy. Check it out. Oh, my God. The teen with the beanie jumps up and slaps a strut on the ceiling. Oh, was that the knocking we heard earlier? Oh, my God. God, Zane, cut it out. You're embarrassing us. I'm sorry for Zane's behavior. I don't even realize how extremely eighth grade it is to jump up and hit things. Uh, no offense, Rosalina. I'm taken. Yeah, the grade is totally immature. No, fuck you, Rosalina. You're smart. It's not, too. Enough. The damage is already done. Now leave. I am tired of people in this town dragging my cousin headlong into danger. I can't believe I actually agree with Tabitha on anything, but this is the worst place I've ever been in my entire life, and I would like to see the sun again before I die. Oh, come on, you guys. It's not a big deal. It's dangerous stuff all the time, and I still do dangerous stuff now. I mean, I don't like this particular situation, what with the whole tischling <laughs> thing, but outside of that, who are we to tell them where they can hang out? I don't know who you think you are in this situation, Stella, but I own this mine. It is entirely within my rights to tell them to leave. Much like it's entirely within my rights to tell you to leave. With your lifetime pan from my mind's not clear enough message for you. Hell oh, yeah, Tabitha. Tabitha 20 something to shreds. Hey, I'm defending you, and I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? I said I can't possibly be sad with me around. How absolutely rude. These pups need to learn some manners. Uh, running a clickbaity YouTube channel where you run around the woods chasing nothing is extremely sad. So she's sad, so what? Give it a few years and you'll be sad too. The passage of time is inescapable. I oh, just wanted to give Rosalina a good time. Her life sucks right now. Yeah, tell them where you had to sleep, Rosalina. We've been living in the library for the past couple of weeks. Dad says we can't stay out of the house. We've got a hot plate, a couple of cots, and one of the back rooms. It's, it's actually a pretty sick setup. No, it isn't, Zane. Rosalina deserves better. No, no, this is about your house being haunted, isn't it? No. What fresh hell is this? Oh my god, did my dad tell you that? Uh, yes. Why did you say it like that? Then he couldn't afford it anymore and was lying to you to save face. What a coward. Like, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's family. It's not like bullying or something. Shut up, Zane. <laughs> I miss Chad from... <laughs> from Redoubly Memory right now. Oscar actually invited to check it out when he saw him earlier today. We could make for a fun, non-abandoned coal mine related activity. Just throwing that out there. There's no ghost, Stella. It would be cool if there was, but Becca's right. Just wish she would be honest with me and tell me what's really going on. So he doesn't think I can handle it. I'm still a little kid. Ah, you are all children, and none of you realize how good you have it. Back in the day, each and every one of you would have been pulling 12 hour shifts in this exact mine. If it wasn't for Charles Lane Laws, the five of you might have some actual character. Exactly. Rosalind is not mature anyway. She still sleeps with soft animals. I don't mean he's not mature. I have pork chop, you know. I have blaha. And yet I'm cis. That's so weird. I rest my case. Wait, what did you say about child labor? Wait, how do you know there isn't a ghost? Why are all the adults in this town such weirdos? There is no ghost. There is no such thing as ghosts. Oscar is just lying. You know, what if we break in and ghost about the place anyway, just to be sure? Oh my god, Zane, you can't do ghost bust if there is no ghost. Also, there are too many women for ghost busting. It'll upset incels. 
Also, Rosalina lives there. She can't break into her own house. There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure out how to bust it if it's actually real. And if it isn't real, well, problem solved. You know, Rosalina, if you want to stay over at my house until Stella Ghost busts your place, we have a finished basement with a pull-out couch. Uh, why are we talking about this like it's a thing? This is not a thing. There is no ghost. I don't care, and I can't believe I've wasted this much time trying to argue with children. I'm washing my hands of this and calling the cops. Feel free to leave before they show up. You hear that, Miles? We are leaving. I just suggest you kids leave this empty mine before someone gets black lung or gets crushed by rocks and meets any one of the many terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines. Oh no, you had to say it. Kanika is interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. That wasn't me, I swear. Then what was it? Come on, so don't you have a list of perfect natural explanations for scary mind noises? It's Tommy Knockers for sure. I know this isn't why we came out here, but we've got to check it out. Okay, Stella is like to freak me out now. Stella! I know, I know, but with what's been happening around here the past few days, what if this is our chance to get an actual solid lead? The stakes couldn't be higher! Do you have no sense of self-preservation? I want you out of here, Stella. Come on, Tabby, you can come along too. Uh, if you guys are going after something spooky, count me in. Nobody is going deeper into the mine. No one is staying in the mine. You are all leaving. Please listen to Tabitha before my heart gets out. It'll be fun, Neeks. It will not. Wait, wait a second, what three have you run off to? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Well, Kanika, maybe if you weren't so scared of the dark or whatever, you would have noticed them sneak off. I noticed them sneak off, and I've been, like, zoning out the whole time we've been here. Ah, oh, they must have squeezed through that child-sized tunnel. Oh, you know, I wonder where that goes. I don't know to get these hips through there. It's probably for the best, dear. Stella, stop sneaking into my minds. Please, I am literally begging you. If only all the tunnels down here were wide enough for adults, we would all be done with this little mess. But no, there just have to be remnants from a bygone era. Uh, didn't you just talk about how child labor was the good old days a minute ago? I was trying to get you to leave my mind. Becca's head pops out the tunnel entrance. We are not about to let you come here and ruin our good time. The mine is safe. I've been here a million times. <laughs> Stupid little face. This game is great. Yeah, if Becca says we're safe, then we're totally safe. I just... whatever, come on you two, I know a cool spot this way. Okay, I think I know where that tunnel rejoins the rest of the mines. I'll go look for them, and I want each and every one of you to take note of the fact that I am doing that. If those idiots get themselves lost and die, I am not letting their family sue me into the ground. Uh, are those really your priorities right now? Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? I want the rest of you out of my mind. Except for you, bloody, I'm not letting you out of my sight. Yeah, sure, I can open that tunnel anyway. They've crossed a barrier that I cannot, so my time is up. But only because Stella promised me a ghost hunt tomorrow. Oh, I've really still to do my dailies anyway, and the service down here sucks. I will happily squad these two knuckleheads out. No, you are not about to weasel your way into this, Stella. Oh, come on, Tabby, I'll be down here a ton. I can totally help out. Tabitha sighs. There is no getting rid of you, is there? Fine, I won't waste my time arguing. Alright, let's do this. Sure, let's not linger any longer than we have to, shall we? Uh, we did Gretchen with me. I don't believe to cover more ground without her. Excuse me, I'm a formidable and self-sufficient monster hunting companion. <laughs> yeah, that's probably for the best. I don't want to repeat of last night, and who knows if we'll have to do any climbing. See you on the other side. Hopefully soon. Sure, we won't be long. Cool. Can't wait to bust some ghosts tomorrow. Plus, it makes him feel good. Kanika, Miles, and Zane head towards the entrance of the mine, leaving you, Tabitha, and Stella to find the remaining teens. Alright, no dawdling. We should be able to catch up with them if we go this way. 
you instead extend your glance as Tabitha ventures forward, much deeper into the mind. Using the same shot, that's fine. As the three of you move deeper into the mines, you hear echoes of conversation bounce across the walls. But back on why are we doing this again? I thought Tabitha was like really cool. Why are we trying to get her all mad? Uh, we're doing this because Tabitha is really cool. She doesn't let anyone boss her around, so we can't just let her boss us around. Why are you here that Tabby? Someone thinks you're cool. I can't believe she used to hang with a nobody like Stella. <laughs> Hey, I don't know. I think Stella's kind of cool. The videos are really neat. Oh, come on. She doesn't even have a sponsor. What kind of a YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? Quick, get Raid Shadow Legends in on this. I, I, I mean, yeah, but I'm in talks with Meat Rice, trademark, and I have plenty from ads and donations. Thanks, Stella. Meat Rice trademark? That's a big deal. They're on like every big podcast. Thank you, thank you. It feels like a really big step for the channel. Ms. Beckham said all the things she said tonight. Uh, Meat Rice trademark, if you're listening, you can totally sponsor the Cult of Tea and Dice. Uh, Cult plays. Like, I don't think Mordrigan would want to sponsor for the podcast. Yeah, she's just mean. It had nothing to do with you. You've seen how she's treated everyone tonight. Except Tabitha. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm surprised you don't have thicker skin about this, Stella. You never struck me as someone who let other people's opinions bother you. If you did, I wouldn't have to try so hard to keep you off my property. Well, I know you don't mean it. I agree to disagree. How does it feel to have a teen girl think you're cool, Tabitha? I feel nothing about it. The opinions of children don't interest me. I don't know, you kind of hesitated there. You're reading into things that aren't fair, Stella. Just because your livelihood resolves around what people think of you doesn't mean that I care what people think of me. Congratulations on your sponsor, though. I'm just glad they're not gossiping about me. Yeah, I know they're just teens, but some of that stuff stung. Oh, I was hoping they were going gossiping about me. Another knock, closer, interrupts your thoughts, followed by another, followed by another. Is it just me? Is that knocking coming from the same direction as those kids? It's not just you. Okay, that knocking is starting to freak me out. Calm down, Rosalina, it's just mind sounds. Did, did you guys see that? No, it's just a shadow. There's no reason to get freaked out. I saw it. Shut up, there's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me. Oh shit, where are you going? You press on. As you progress deeper into the mine, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. The tunnel ends abruptly in front of you. A centuries-old ladder is the only way forward. In the darkness beyond, you can still hear the youths, their panic arguing, echoing down the pitch-black corridors. And here they are. The tunnel they crawl through passes through the chamber below. Shouldn't be hard to find them once we get down there. I've never been this far in. Congratulations, Stella. You got what you wanted. Tabitha crawls up to the ladder and disappears over its edge. Alright, let's do this. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins to climb down. Follow them down into the pit. You walk to the ladder and climb down. I'm pretty sure this is the way back. Come on. Pretty sure? I thought you'd been down here before. Okay, maybe I didn't get this far in, but whatever. It doesn't matter. I definitely need the way out. Hurry. I don't want to be down here anymore. I, I think it was actually this way. Oh, shut up! No one even wanted you to come with us anyway. A car? Yeah, that place all right. Good thing they're so damn loud. It sounds like they're really lost. The voices around you, those of the teens and your companions, sound odd, distant. There's something in the darkness before you that is much louder, though you don't hear it, but you can feel it in your chest. 
like the deep growl of a predator. You find yourself stepping towards the black chamber before you, compelled by some unnatural force. Hey, are you alright, bloody? What do you think you're doing? Get away from there! Your cousin dives towards you, but not before the light in your phone illuminates the chamber. Oh, great! Bloody! Bloody, are you alright? Oh, thank God you're alive. It looks like you had a seizure or something, and then you and Tabby were just conked out. I'm fine. Ah. You can barely open your eyes. You're not fine. Neither if you move a muscle. I don't want you straining yourselves while you're still recovering from whatever that was. I'm going to get you both some help. I'll be back soon, I promise. Don't die on me, all right? She looked weirdly happy. You fade back out of consciousness as your companion clambers out of the pit, intent on your rescue. You raise up on your elbows, head still swimming from the visions, your surroundings coming back into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues, now magnitude more intense than ever. Through it, you once again hear the panicked voices of bickering teenagers echoing down the stone corridors. Becca, you're just getting us more lost. It's this way. If you're so sure, why don't you just leave? I can't believe I let Alexis talk me to inviting you in the first place. Becca, I'm just trying to help. I said go. Okay, I will. Alexis, you don't have to go with her. You know that, right? I mean, pick a side, Alexis. Uh, I'm sure Becca knows where we're going. She, she, she wouldn't just lie. So sorry, Rosalina. Increasingly desperate voices of teens are drowned out by the thunderous knocking. You can practically feel the round shake beneath you. You can almost see the walls vibrate with the intensity of the hellish sound. God, that knocking is not helping my headache. What the hell just happened? I, I had some sort of vision. Did, did you see it too? There's got to be fumes or something down here. It's an old mine. These places are death traps. We probably just hallucinated. Are you literally gaslighting me? I said I saw it too. Stop being weird. We're leaving. Rosalina appears in the passageway to your left. She's out of breath. It looks like she's been crying. I'm so sorry I snuck off like that. I just wanted Alexis to think I was cool. The entire cabin shakes at the sound of rockfall. I don't know what the hell is up with that knocking, but that is the sound of a mind collapse. Quick, up the ladder, both of you. But wait, Beck and Alexis are still down there. You can't just leave them here. I know which way they're going. They'll listen to you this time, I promise. Do you have a death wish, little girl? This isn't the movie. The best thing we can do to help those girls right now is not be buried alive ourselves. Shit. Okay, let's do this. Bloody, don't do this to me. They're kids, Tabitha. I'm not going to leave them down here. Are you serious? Thank you. They're back this way. Hurry! Rosalina runs back the way she came. Follow her. You run after her. The mines shake with each new thunderous blow as bits of rock and dust fall off the ceiling and scatter on the floor around you. Rosalina leads the way, and Tabitha isn't far behind you. I thought you were way out. I thought we'd be down here a million times already. I was picking it up, okay? I swear to God, what if we get stuck down here? You say nothing. Focus on following Rosalina as she darts ahead. They're coming! Just stay where you are! Rosalina, you came back! I don't want to die down here! reach forward and forcefully grab back at Alexis, silently pulling them behind you. You quickly push your way, your way back the way you came, pieces of fallen rock littering the path around you. 
all of you, start climbing now. Once the last thing is up, Tabitha grabs onto the ladder and starts climbing. You follow suit and start climbing. For a second there, I thought she was going to shove us back down the ladder. This way, come on. Your cousin moves with the kind of swiftness you'd expect from someone who spent her entire life working in and around commons. Why can't you just listen to someone other than yourself, Becca? I'm sorry, okay? God! Continue towards the entrance. You push forward, your burning muscles giving way to pure adrenaline. To your horror, you see cracks forming on the walls of the tunnels. Come on, we've got to go faster! Almost there, we can see the entrance! Your surroundings quake as the mine collapses around you. And then the knocking fades, and you feel safe having arrived back at the entrance in one piece. What the fuck? What the fuck? Rosalina, are you okay? Clearly she's not okay, idiot. Shut up, Becca. It was your idea to go down in the first place. This is your fault. Shit, shit. Why? Why did this have to happen? Okay, the knocking stopped. At least all of you stay exactly where you are. I'm going to make some calls. This... Really hurts. Stella and Kanika pop their heads through the main entrance. Tabitha just stormed out of here, are you? Oh my god. Rosalina, can you hear me? We're going to get you out, okay? Stella already called an ambulance. But that means cops are going to come. They didn't know I was drinking. They didn't know we weren't there to drink, right? Becca, that doesn't matter. My dad found out he'll kill me. He can't know. In the panic, Becca runs to the entrance and pushes her way through. Rosalina, she's just being an asshole. One of us should wait by the gate to make sure they can find us up here. I should be checking with Tabby. See if he needs help. We're going to get you help. Everything's going to be okay. All right, I'll go down to the gate. Rosalina, I'm so sorry. I'll be back soon. We're going to get you out of here, and you're going to be just fine, okay? Bloody and Alexis will keep you safe until then. Don't worry, pup. I know you're sick, but I'll help you to keep you warm. I'm gonna die. Rosalina, don't say things like that. You're gonna be okay. Just keep breathing. Thanks, bloody. Rosalina's breath comes in quick, irregular bursts. If I don't make it, tell my dad I'm sorry. I don't want to be sorry about. It's only in Becca's fault. We never should have gone down there. It's not my fault. I went down there because I wanted to. Rosalina pauses, catching her breath. I'm glad everyone else made it out okay. I couldn't have done it without your help. <laughs> yeah, that's all you don't drink under age. A dick. This is right. I don't have a very few of your age. I about a little time like this. I'm braver than a lot of adults I know. It's you know? You're brave. Braver than I am. I'm smarter. I don't start with Becca, maybe. Oh, maybe it would have been different. It's just unfair this happened to you. The nicest person I know. Still wait, just hurts like hell. Sorry, I shouldn't have listened to talk. I'll, I'll just hold your hand and I come back with help, okay? Don't go to sleep just yet, pup. Alexis grasps Rosalina's hand, steers. Ah, tears streak down both of their cheeks as you sit in silence together waiting for the long, anxious moments to pass before help arrives. Some of my men are on the way with rock lifts. We'll get you out of there soon. It's going to be okay, Miss Alina. Everything's going to be just fine. You're over here, Earl. Jesus, H. Christ, you weren't kidding about the emergency. It'll still be a bit for the ambulance. This deputy is over in Bree Bar, so at least another half hour. You yeah, the man. You have half an hour to get her out of there. Move it. Rosalina, sweetie, I'm here. Dad, I'm sorry. 
I'm so sorry. You don't have to be sorry. It's okay. We're all here. You can hang on, Rosalina. I know you can. Tabitha's men quickly get to work and manage to pull Rosalina out from the rubble just as the ambulance arrives. Sir, I'm afraid there's no space in the back. What do you mean? I, I can't ride with her? You're better off driving behind us. We're headed to Brevard, so it's quite a ways. Is she going to be okay? Sh she's going to make it, right? Please, God. Yes, sir, I promise you. We do everything we can to keep her stable. The vitals are looking good. Oh, so you know my poor baby. I'll be there as fast as I can, okay? I promise you won't be alone. Love you, Dad. The paramedics load Rosalina into the back of the ambulance and drive off. Oscar approaches you off to the side as the police talk to Tabitha and her men. What the hell happened in here? being teens. We did our best to get them out of there. No, this is no teenager's fault. It's a parent's job to make sure their kids don't deliberately put themselves in these situations. This thing was mad at me, and instead of fixing the thing that was driving her away, I just ignored it. This is my fault. Oscar, I'm the parent here. I'm sure she thinks I'm making things up about a house being haunted, but I've seen things I can't explain, and it's only gotten worse over time. My office still stands to check it out for you. Once you're back from the hospital, that is. Thanks, Stella. That means a lot. I, I've got to go. Mr. Gutierrez, is it okay if I come too? I want to be there for her. Of course, Alexis. It's, it's good for her to see a friendly face. The two of them head over to Oscar's car and drive it off. Selena's going to be okay. Well, the paramedic said she was stable. She's a tough kid. She'll be okay. That's too easy to be our digitaling problem. Yeah, I think you're right. There's still a lot of unanswered questions too. Even more than we had this morning. And we had a lot of questions this morning. This is almost a little too magic for me. Just because two bad things have happened doesn't mean there's a pattern. Right? There was a stone carving on the wall of that pit. It gave me some sort of vision. I saw what happened to this place. Are you sure it wasn't just order suggestion? I mean, we talked about that mine a lot today. I don't know, Meeks. You went down there. Bloody and Tabby had, like, simultaneous seizures next to a creepy stone carving. It's like something out of a movie. Just because they passed out or had seizures doesn't mean it wasn't auto-suggestion. I'm pretty sure Tabitha and I saw some ghosts down there. They were right behind you right before you left, and they followed us when we went after Becca and Alexis. Did you not see them? No, I didn't see anything other than the two of you and that carving. That's super weird. I, mean, I don't want to doubt what you experienced, but you were deep in a dark abandoned coal mine. You might have just been primed to see things. You know, when I think about it, it totally fits the profile for some of the toy knocker stories. What are their actual bona fide ghosts? Stella. Everything that happened down there centred around that main chamber, and I saw that carving. Stella showed me a photo. Weird stuff. I mean, I'm not entirely off base about the cult stuff you mentioned earlier today, but this thing felt old. So what happens now? What happens now? We go home. Miss Scarlet, mad if we have a quick word with your cousin, miss, in private. Okay, fine, just make it quick and don't you dare try to pull anything on him. He did nothing wrong here. Ladies, I'm afraid that means you too. 
and you need to talk to us. We witnessed this too. Oh, sure, but that can wait. We know where to find y'all. Oh, coincidence! Running into you two nights in a row. This is my colleague, Deputy Derrickson. Pleased to meet you, buddy. Called us out yesterday. It's my special bowling night. Man has to have his me time. But I was briefed on the events of last night, and I'm still not sure if what went on could be considered a crime. Luke has been missing since then, though we found neither had nor hair of him. Could be he's just on an extended hunting trip. Only the first time he's done something like that. I was told the footage showed his supposed body, but we couldn't get the camera working, so no way to confirm until we track him down. Now, I understand that both these terrible unfortunate accidents had nothing to do with you being in the area, but... As officers of the law, you have to understand that we get a little suspicious when we see the same face multiple times in a row. And, uh, we have to ask, what exactly were these teenagers doing in a shopping mall owned by your family, and why were you down there with them? We saw some teens sneak into an abandoned mine, so we went after them. We were just trying to do the right thing. Of course, of course, very noble of you, pardon our questions, just trying to gather all the facts, you see. Just being thorough, our duty as officers of the law. Well, if there's nothing more you can tell us, I suppose we'll let you go on about your evening, but uh, we may be in touch. Have a good one. Deputy Derrickson tips his hat to you. The two officers wander back towards the mine, Derrickson taking notes as they examine the scene. You make your way towards Stella and Kanika. I just can't believe. Two nights in a row. Is it my fault, Nix? Stella, no, this is just an awful coincidence. It's not your fault. Oh, hey, I guess the cops are done with you. Aren't they going to take you in for being present at an accident? Oh, sorry if they gave you a hard time. Small time cops, you know. Always blaming everything on drifters. Even that's of God, I guess. Excellent, you didn't get arrested. Now come on, let's get back to the estate. I'd like to get some rest, but I have to deal with a fallout of everything that happened tonight. I'll see you tomorrow, okay, bloodied? Excuse me, I... Just stopped trying to get my cousin killed, Stella. Come on, let's go. Tell us walking towards a car, pulling you by your arm. See you tomorrow, guys. You can practically feel Tabitha roll her eyes as she drags you to the car. Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car comes along the darkened road. You try to keep an eye on the surrounding buildings as she drives, wary of what may lurk behind the tree line. Why do you treat Stella like that? Didn't you two used to be friends? It was a different time in my life. I just wish she'd get that we're not in high school anymore. I'm a different person than whoever she thinks she knows. How are you holding up? Poorly, but I'd really rather we don't get into it. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha slink back into silence. You once again cross the threshold of the estate, the musty stench of the decaying mansion greeting you with its undertones of mildew and wood rot. Well, this day has been a lot more stressful than it needed to be, and I'm sure it's the precursor to a horrifically stressful week. I'm going to bed. I suggest you do the same. Thanks for calling me about those kids, by the way. It was unexpected. You could have... No, you should have waited for me. Oh, I'm too tired to argue. I'll see you in the morning. Turn off the turns and makes your way up the stairs. Her posture defeated. Turn in. You went up to your room to turn in. Can I talk to, to the possum? Oh, don't talk to the possum. Oh, fair. You collapse in Tabitha's dusty guest bed, your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the shore mine, you barely even notice the dust. Your phone buzzes on the table. You're 
These are those things, right? Kanika sends a picture of a pair of ditchlings by the side of the road. I saw them again too. Another picture, this time of them staring from a tree. WTF? These things are definitely not hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. Well, I guess there's more of them being here than the, than the mind collapse. More to them being here than the mind collapse. Anyway, I'm sleeping tonight. You think about look, checking up the guest room window, but at this point you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off, replaced by a creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes even as you stare down at the ominous pictures on your phone. If it weren't for the pit of dread bawling in your stomach, you would almost feel comfortable as you settle in between the covers, your tired bones sinking into the decrepit mattress. When you close your eyes, you see Rosalina's face, twisted with pain, staring up at you with tear-streaked cheeks, trapped by powers beyond her control. Terrified of what her now uncertain future would hold. Your eyes shoot back open, your heart pounding as a door to your room swings open. Just the cat. It's always just the cat. Don't read into this. Doing the French accent now. The woman kicked me out. Just Vante wants please to sleep. That's like for German and French, though. It's nice to see another living being, even one. As unfriendly as Tabitha's cat, the comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease, and you finally slip into a deep sleep. End of chapter CG. Basement. This is the end of Chapter 2, Episode 308. Proceed, if you dare. If you'd like to continue with this world state in Episode 3, please save your game now. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. So that was episode two. I am really, really digging this game. This is, it's it's well written. The art's great. The music's great. Ah, oh, I, oh wow. I like just get the feeling that there's, there's, there's sort of fun little ways the game would change based on which of the two traits you select at the beginning of the whole story. Oh my God, there's a character history thing. Oh, that's cool. Okay, Monday. Major decisions. <laughs> so I got talk towns not. Was offered boiled peanuts from a stranger. Could have killed me. Peanut allergies are deadly. Met Dustin, the opposite that lives in my dresser, and made him a nest. Watched Duke die in the woods and called the police. Met Stella's friend Kanika and her mother Sybil and learned about ditchlings. Crashed at Stella's. Called Tabitha before falling asleep. Neat. I'm seeing to put Tuesday's one later okay um but yeah so i'm really tempted to just dive straight to chapter three for the next uh, episode but we'll see um but yeah I, I, I hope you've enjoyed this if you have please do like subscribe click on the little notification button you can uh, find me on twitter at saint fox underscore sanguine you can find me at the cult of tea and dice.net you can find the cult on twitter at cult tea and dice I can't even remember what the cult's doing. You can find it. It's fine. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for listening. And goodbye.